Indulging in a spot of vanity. Handsome devil, aren't I? Be that as it may. Theramorphosis. What does it make you think of? Spot on. Day one, fever and memory loss. Day two, hallucinations and graying skin. Day three, hair loss and blood leaking from all orifices. Need to go on? Day four, excruciating pain as the skeleton and organs reform and reposition. Day five, the host personality has disappeared. Fingers and toes and limbs elongate. I take it you get the picture? Day six, the flesh around the mouth splits to make way for tentacles. Day seven, a mind flayer is born. Spot on again. Our orifices remain blissfully unblooded, our heads remain clear, and our blood temperature normal. Any expert will agree this is abnormal. I'll toast to that. The pragmatic in me, however, sees only the silence before the storm. Something to sleep on. We should get some rest. What's on your mind? Oh, would that I could. But your entourage is full. You'll need to make room for me first. Wonderful. Lead on, then. I saw you getting a lecture from our magical friend. I have to say, I thought you'd look worse, but no. Not a tentacle to be seen. Indeed you could. We're all doing surprisingly well, given the circumstances. I'm not taking anything for granted, of course. First sign of change, and I'll have to stop that pretty little heart of yours. I am open to suggestions. Knives, poison, strangulation, whatever you'd prefer. I don't think poison is for me. Nor stabbing, come to think of it. I always felt decapitation was a fine choice. One good swing and then nothing. <laughs> but we were talking about you. What'll it be? <laughs> a classic. One good thrust to the heart and you're gone. We need a good blade, of course. Don't want to waste time hacking and prodding with a dinner knife. Uh, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. This is all a worst-case scenario, obviously. If the last day has taught me anything, it's that the impossible is more likely than you think. Now, let's get some rest. The sooner we start tomorrow, the better our chances of keeping this hypothetical. Abominations grow inside us. Our bones should ache, our mouths should bleed, yet we thrive. It is madness. Keep your rest short. Time is not our ally. I 
I couldn't help but overhear... Well, all right, I could have helped but didn't. Anyway, I feel the same. Other than the occasional mental exchange, it's almost as if we're not infected. The voice on the ship told me I'd become a beautiful weapon. What do you think it meant? Whatever they were, those plans were interrupted by the dragons. Either way, we can't take the lack of symptoms for granted. We have to find a healer. Well, I've said my piece. Get some rest. Did you want something? Question for you. Have you ever heard a banshee's scream? Mm, for the best that you haven't. An agonizing wail. Loud enough to wake the dead and shrill enough to shatter a golden goblet. I thought it the most terrible noise in all 16 planes. But there's one even more fearsome than that. Oh, <laughs> The lad's quite the tease, but he's a charming sort of cad. Well, most of the time. No, I was thinking of a far more loathsome sound. The doubt in our minds crying out for attention. It's hopeless, it says. Stop resisting. Give up and give in. Doubt is the greatest villain we face. Greater than all the hell's devils. Greater than a murderous god. Most people don't find it so easy to conquer. It's a good thing for us that we aren't most people. Slay your doubt and nothing can stop you. Not a demon, not a dragon, and certainly not an illithid worm. I'm glad to see you're not one to give up. Be wary of false promises. The missing druid, Halsin, was it? He may be talented, but only a Githyanki Zathis can cleanse an embedded tadpole.
At the ready. So, do you have loves waiting for you once this is all over? You know what? That is not the easiest of questions for me to answer. You mean just waiting? Like a lovesick puppy? Short-term amusements are much less hassle. Goblin tracks. And far too many of them, too. up ahead. Something's wrong. You're a true soul. You can't die. Please, stay with us. I, I don't think he's conscious. C can you hear us, Ed? You, not a step closer. A strange symbol glows marked on their flesh, and something within you stares in response. Hurt badly. An oil bear got him deep. If there's anything you can do... I'm watching you. The injured man locks eyes with you. A familiar squirming churns in your head. Your minds intertwine. You see his siblings, Andrik and Brenner. New recruits. Yours to shepherd. Protect them. She is a true soul. Mind her. She will... She... She... Edwin! Ed! Please! He's with the Absolute now. You're... You're a true soul. Edwin, our brother, he was chosen. Like you. Do you have orders for us? We were reporting to Edwin. What? Are you... Are you testing us? A true soul, like you, has been chosen by the Absolute. 
You speak with her voice. Your words are her command. She grants you the power to enforce her will. And when the time comes, the true souls, you will rule. Oh, I like these two. All zeal and no brains. I'm sorry, true soul. I only repeated what I thought I knew. It seems the Absolute still has a great deal to teach me. We know that all too well, ma'am, but the Absolute sent us here. We're looking for fugitives, survivors from that ship that crashed farther west of here. We don't know what they look like, but anyone who survived that crash is bound to be injured. That's enough to get us started. The Absolute wants them found. At any cost. You! Brenna! Kill her! Chances. Hungry for the slaughter. Is it right? should search that corpse. Strange power resonates within the corpse. It calls to you. Most corpses feel like toys before you, to be played with and discarded when you tire. Why let its host's memories go to waste? The tadpole has absorbed it all. Its experience could nourish you, strengthen you. Still no symptoms. No sign of tentacles so far. The same. Except for a knot of worry in my stomach that's in no rush to go away. That I can relate to. Strange. It looks healthy, but it's stone dead. Who cares about some pig? It's dead. Let's go. The pig's dead, my friend. Staring at it won't bring it back. Come on. We'll never fix these brain worms if we stop and gawk at every piece of carrion you find. The boar seems to be fresh. 
only a few hours dead. Examining the corpse, you see two small puncture wounds in its neck. And is it dead enough for you? I... It's been drained of blood with wounds in its neck. It's been killed by a vampire. I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to worry you. They are ferocious creatures. But don't worry, I'll keep watch tonight. We won't have to worry about nocturnal visitors. Now please, let's go. A sweetheart, perhaps? Not what in particular. <sighs> the city is a veritable feast of sweethearts. Mm. You must be eager to get back then. Slimmer pickings out in this wilderness. Keep your distance, darling. Back of the crevice lies a bag enfolded in the chitinous squabbling of spiders. A shiny gold coin pokes from its mouth. The creatures clutch the pouch possessively. You have no doubt, a spider egg is nestled within. One by one, the spiders retreat to the rear of the crevice, lulled by your murmurs. You stash the bag. Something clinks among the coins. Several spiders rest in the rear of the crevice. Careful, I bite. Necklace has a harper sigil. Why were they here? All right, what now?
If it ain't the friendly drow. Thought you were with the goblins when you showed up at the gate. Glad you weren't. You fight well. Not like them bloody tieflings. Half my crew are full of holes. Now I'm gonna take the blame for leading the goblins here. And losing track of the bloody druid. They chased us, all the way from the ruins we were poking around in. Aye, his name's Halsin, and if he's still alive, he'll be cursing the day he laid eyes on me. We've got a contract, to track down some relic, and he wanted in on the job. Eyes lit up when he heard about it. Didn't work out, though. Goblins got him when we were turning tail. He's either digging latrines or boiling in a cook pot by now. Job's all yours, if you got a death wish. There's a wizard in Baldur's Gate that'll pay gobloads for a relic supposedly buried round these parts. But gold ain't any use if you're too cold to spend it. If I knew that, I wouldn't be back here with half my crew gone. But look, if you're itching to meet Kellenvor, I won't stop you. It's called the Night Song. Supposed to be hidden under the temple where the goblins jumped us. I'd give you the map and wish you a happy funeral, but my mate Brian kept hold of it like his own todger. Goblins made sure to the fat old chunk. All I've got's the contract. It'll show you where we turn back, if you feel like dying. <laughs> Don't thank me. I'll be well on my way to Baldur's Gate when you die. Finish this bottle. Got enough dead to toast anyway. And we'll have a dog, right? They don't allow them in Baldur's Gate. Cats, though? A little orange cat. And a house with a little door so that it can come and go as it pleases. And a high fence to keep eavesdroppers out. No bother. We're just daydreaming, anyhow. What about you? Big plans for when you get to the city? Know what you mean. Do we ever? But I, I've heard there's all sorts in the city. It, it might not be like it was in El Terrell. I mean, in Baldur's Gate, they give you a chance. Good luck to you. Wish us a little too. I think we'll all need it. Surely destined for the slaughter. What would be more perfect than to die by your love's side? And known love was not enough. I suppose we'll start in the outer city. Get a little business going. Your spiced tea is life-changing. And I can bake up almond cakes 20 at a time. Shouldn't be too long now. <clears throat> All is ash and meat. Ah, uh, Fidge isn't the talk of the camp. Thank goodness you came along when you... Oh! You're twitching something fierce, love. And your eyes. 
You look like you don't know the meaning of the word sleep. Auntie Ethel will search you out. I've lotions and potions galore. Aha! You take a sup of that and you'll feel right as rain, sweetie. Oh, it is just a healing potion, nothing fancy. Here. You just look like you might need a pick-me-up. I'm sorry to go on about it, but are you all right? You're looking awful peaky. Oh, I've seen it all. I once had a fella who'd been caught dabbling with a dryad. The wife was none too pleased and introduced him to a pot of boiling oil. But worry not. I fixed him up and depending on the lighting, he looks good as new. My point is, whatever ails you, I promise I've seen worse. My, she sounds positively demented. I love it. Let's tell her everything. What is it, Petal? What's wrong? Then let old Auntie Ethel have a look at you. First things first. Tell me what's at you. Oh, blessed helm. That sounds horrible. I don't know how I'd handle such a thing. Were you hurt recently? An accident of some sorts? That could explain things. Oh, you cheeky pop. That might scare someone else, but I know what naughty girls need. A bit of love and care. If I was back in my tea house, I'd make you a cuppa and tell you to put your feet up. Alas, here I can only tell you to be kind to yourself, Petal. And encourage you to browse my bits and pieces, of course. Let me know if anything catches your eye. Myself included. Sure. What else am I here for? Bye now, Petal. Depends. How many people are dumb enough to ask? Hello, Petal. Need anything? Any lotions or potions? As you recount your adventure, Auntie Ethel nods along, her eyes wide. <gasps> you poor pet! My heart goes out to you, truly! But I confess, that doesn't explain all your symptoms. Some of the things you told me, why, I've never heard of a parasite doing that. This is serious. I've never a potion or lotion here that could do it, but... Yes, I may have something at home. I've collected some interesting bits and bobs over the years. You'll have to stop by my house, just at the edge of the forest. Let me mark it on your map. I'll be heading back soon, so I can meet you there. Now, do you need anything? I have a few odds and ends for sale. Hey, bother.
Be careful on the road. I'd hate if something happened to you. Take care, Petal. True. Lee and Roland would never admit it, but they'd take an arrow for the other. Also stab each other. Not sure what will come first. Thanks for cutting in. There might have been more than words if you hadn't. I keep dreaming I'll wake up with my throat slit. May your sleep be more pleasant. Looking for steel? I have, well, something close. Take me. What I wouldn't do for better tools. Don't be grumpy, Rhoda. We'll get to the city soon. I am not grumpy. Scowl on your face, which find the truth. You're an idiot. Where's that old bucket? 